In the previous video, I introduced this simple pen holder for the Hypercube. It does what it says. It allows clamping of pens between 8 to 11 millimeters in diameter. It works, but what if the surface that you're drawing on is uneven, or if the surface isn't perfectly level? Then a static pen holder like this may not be suitable. Here's the same pen holder, but suspended between these two rails. It allows movement in one axis, while still clamping the pen firmly in place. I searched through Thingiverse for pen holders with one axis of movement. Some fit snugly around the pen they're designed for, but wouldn't allow for varying diameters of pens, whilst others used a screw to hold the pen in place, allowing various diameter pens to fit inside. So I knocked up something similar using two screws to vary the diameter of the pen which is allowed to fit in the holder, whilst also allowing the pen to move in the one axis using the rubber band as the spring. But there's too much play here. The pen is allowed to wiggle in the uh, X and Y axis. If I tighten the screws down to remove that wiggle, then the pen locks, unable to move in the axis. However, if you just, just loosen the, the screws just enough so the pen can move, you're back to wiggle. I thought about replacing these two pillars with the same clamping mechanism that I'm using on the uh, simple pen holder. So here I've got the pen inserted and it's allowed to move in the one axis. But just like with these uh, pillars over here, there's play. And in this particular pen holder, there's a lot of play in the Y axis. Not so much in the, in the X, but quite a lot in the Y axis. And if I tried to tighten this down even uh, a quarter of a turn, so now it's very sticky. There is still some play there. And if I go down another quarter of a turn, the pen is now locked. And of course there's no play, but we need the pen to move in the Z axis. So this idea probably wouldn't have worked to replace these two posts. I even thought about using the plastic itself as the spring instead of a rubber band to move the pen uh, in the one axis. But as you can see here, I'm using uh, these S bends as the spring. This is printed in PLA. Only two perimeters here. These are 0 0.8 millimeters in, in thickness. And it's still just a little bit too rigid. Like it, like if, if I squeeze down enough, yes, it moves, but it's, it's way more rigid than uh, using a rubber band for the axis. So I think I still prefer the rubber band to move the pen. Rather than waste more time, I just went with what I knew would work, and that is a couple of linear rails and a couple of linear bearings. I don't know about you guys, but I have plenty of spare 8mm rod and these linear bearings lying around. Just like the simple pen holder, you're still going to need the 6 uh, M3 hex nuts, the 1 M3 by 20 mm screw. However, you're also going to need uh, two lengths of 8mm rod, these are 55 millimeters in length and two 8 millimeter linear bearings. These are LM8UU. To assemble the pen carriage, insert one of the M3 hex nuts into the tower of the clamp. The thumb screw is one M3 hex nut within the cylinder. And of course the M3 by 20 millimeter screw that then screws in from the opposite side to provide the clamp for the pen. And for the two linear bearings, these are just friction fit at the moment. There, there's no need to, to clamp these down with any, uh, with any certainty as the, the pen is going to be moving freely only in the one axis. Uh, so these shouldn't need any more bracing than that. And for the base of the pen holder, four M3 hex nuts, two lengths of eight millimeter rod. These are 55 millimeters in length. And just like with the linear bearings into the pen carriage, uh, the linear rods are held in with just a friction. They're just a tight, tight fit, as you can see. So I'll push one of these in from one side first, just only about that far, which allows me then to, to drop in the pen carriage, push them back a bit. Now I can push that this one here forward through the linear bearing to the other side, 
like that, and then just continue pushing straight through. One, two. It's basically a mini axis. Moves freely, of course, as you can imagine, with linear bearings on smooth, smooth rod. In fact, it's going to be mounted like this on the carriage, so up and down. And because the the, uh, the pen carriage is so heavy with these two LM8 UU bearings, uh, we almost don't even need a rubber band or a spring to pull them down. Gravity is doing that for us. However, depending on how fast you're drawing across a surface, if it does come across an uneven section, gravity might be too slow in pulling this down. So to allow uh, a bit of a, a spring to ensure that the pen uh, carriage is always up against one side. Uh, there's just like a little um, lip here which allows a rubber band to attach between there and the and the pen carriage. So this rubber band I have is just a bit too big. So easy, just half the size by bending it back on itself. So now it's two loops of one smaller rubber band over the clamp of the pen holder can see and then onto that post like that and now it's springing back in that direction and it's still quite easy to to move I'm not using much force here at all to to push that back but it definitely wants to to snap back and just to test how this works holding the pen steady in the X and Y axis directions but allowing it to move in the Z we'll install our pen clamp that down and if I hold this down you'll see there's virtually no movement in the in the X or Y axis it's a much more sturdy rigid setup than I've had previous and the last thing to do Attach it to the X carriage. If I move the bed platform by hand, just screwing it upwards, hits the pen, lifts the pen holder, drop the bed. And drops. Perfect linear motion. When homing your z-axis, ensure that the pen has engaged the platform but has also pushed the pen carriage up approximately one millimeter. That way the pen has a downward force onto the surface and is more likely to produce a darker image. So during my testing when I was preparing to draw printed circuits on this piece of paper using the static pen holder with that ballpoint pen I showed you previously this is the result you can see it's pretty good however there are some lighter areas and some darker areas especially around this corner here so it's as if the the bed isn't perfectly flat and the pen was making less contact over here than it was over to here and here's that same test PCB image again, this time using the one axis pen holder. And as you can see, it's much darker than the previous and it's a uniform print all the way around. Let me show you how I've drawn this printed circuit on this piece of paper, but this time we'll actually draw on a single sided piece of printed circuit board, so onto the copper surface, plus we'll use a permanent uh, waterproof marker. This particular one prints really good on copper, however on paper it acts like a sponge and the paper actually absorbs way too much and leaves massive blotches all over the place. On the reprap.org wiki site there is an article called How to PCB from Eagle. Here they explain exporting your board design via the HPGL CAM processor. Once exported, you can use an online conversion tool to convert that HPGL file into G-code, which allows our 3D printers to plot 
the printed circuit board. In Eagle, there are example boards I'm going to test print here. Double clicking on this example brings up this board design. Here we can go File, Cam Processor, and choose the output device, and we'll search for HPGL. The diameter of the pen is whatever we're using. The pen that I'm using has a 0.6 millimeter diameter. Here it's asking for mils, so the equivalent to 0.6 is 24 mils. And the last thing we need to do is only to select the layers that we wish. To do that, we'll go to Layer, Deselect All, and here all we want is Top, Pads, and the Vias. Choose a destination to save, and lastly, Process Job. Going to the Online Converter, we can browse for the file we just exported from Eagle, Click Upload, and here is all the code from the file that was just uploaded. There are a few parameters we can set before we hit Convert. The Pen Up Z-axis value, I'm leaving it at default here, 5mm. Pen Down, 0mm. The Feed Rate, this is how fast it's going to print. This will be 500mm per minute. And some initial G-code commands. And lastly, the HPGL units per millimeter converter, which will convert HPGL units into millimeters. Click Convert. And here is the converted G code, ready to be plotted via our 3D printers. Last thing to do, download G code. To begin, I'm just going to hold down the PCB just with the binder clips, the same binder clips I use for my Print and Z plate. Of course, you could use tape to hold this down instead. So I'll put one here and I'll put another one uh, on this corner over there. And the pen I'll be using is the same one I used in the previous video. I actually bought it specific for, for this purpose. It's a etch resistant pen. So I'll plop that into the pen holder. Clamp that down. I want to home where I want the print to begin. Which is right about there. And I want to preload the pen holder with about one millimeter of up. So about there. You can copy the G-code file directly to an SD card, or you can print directly from the PC. Here I've opened the G-code in Pronterface, and we can see the circuit design on the bottom left here. Hit connect, and print. And here is the demo example board I found on Eagle. Not exactly sure what this circuit does, but it plotted perfectly. You can see the etch resistant pen is uniformly deposited across this entire circuit. If this wasn't dark enough, you could 
uh, re-plot over the top again to double the thickness of the etch resistant pen. And of course my pen is 0.6 millimeters in diameter. So when you're designing a circuit board like this, like you'll see over here, these two pads are probably too close to that track in the center. So you'd use a, a pen with a smaller diameter or just redesign your board so those traces weren't so close together. And this only took four minutes to plot. That is pretty fast. And if you made a mistake or you're just practicing or you need to replot a different design on the same piece of copper, you can't just wash this off. It is waterproof. However, if you have some isopropyl alcohol, this is exactly the same stuff that I use to clean my print surface. It also quickly removes this etch resistant pen. Simply a couple of sprays. See it's already coming away. I'm going to use a cloth to wipe it off. Virtually gone. It's leaving some imprint there. I'm not exactly sure what that is. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click that thumbs up button. Also consider becoming a tech to see patron. Depending on your pledge, you'll get access to the tech to see patron news feed, early access to my YouTube videos, plus your name in the video description and end credits.